Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this neat intro. And if you want to download the project, you can by clicking on the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first thing I want to focus on is the rounded rectangles that I have here. Now the first thing I did was I went up here to my shape tool and I went to rounded rectangle tool and I clicked and dragged and I, I held down shift in order to make it uh, size up evenly. Like it doesn't skew like a rectangle, like it's a perfect square. The next thing I did is, as you can see this, this is sideways, or not sideways, but it's rotated. So I go down here to my rectangle and I go to right, uh, rectangle transformation. Don't go to the transformation because that's the whole kind of comp. It's not the rectangle itself. So the pivot is weird. Like it turns, the pivot isn't actually the rectangle, but rather the layer itself. So it's going to spin off this pivot point. Like it'll rotate around here rather than rotating the square itself. So I go to my rectangle transform and I go to my rotation and I just want to skew this a bit about uh, mm, about 45 right <coughs> and then I want to add a trims path and I want to kind of trim this to the point where there's just a little bit left about that much and right here we have an offset and what the offset does it actually moves where the end is or where the where the start is practically it just moves the kind of the rectangle itself so you can move where where the end and the start is so I'm gonna move this right about here and then I'm gonna control D and now I have a I have a I have duplicated my layer so I have practically the same thing here but now I want to move this to the other side because what I when my animation starts I actually have two so I actually made two rectangles and I just anim animated them separately. So I have this second one and I go to my content uh, rectangle and transform rectangle. Oh, my apologies, uh, trim path. And I go to my offset here and I just move this to the other side. So now I have this unique, like this starts here and then this starts here. And then all you gotta do is click on the stopwatch on my end. And now I animate it from one end to the other end. And we have this going on. So from right here, I have my trim path at, at zero. So there's nothing. And then I go from zero all the way to a hundred. So I want the whole square to show. Now, because it's two different pieces, they're, at, they're animated separately but they all complete ultimately in the end. So if I turn this one off, it, it stops, the, there is no animation at the top because that's the whole, that's the second square. And then at 100, it completes the whole square. And then same thing for this one. It's just animated at zero and then it goes all the way until it's at 100. So it's practically just two squares on top of each other. They're just animated. Another thing I did was actually animated the rotation because I wanted it to spin while it was while it was finishing its little trim paths animation. So it looks a little more interesting rather than just having it animated, it rotates while the trim path is happening. So you have, and another thing I actually did was I wanted this to start off really, really fast the rotation and then kind of just slowly, slowly end the rotation. So if you see, it starts off really fast, but then as it gets towards the end, it slows down. So what I did is I got my keyframes here. I right click keyframe assistant, easy or F9. And I went to my speed graph over here. And if you don't see anything, uh, you're either not clicked on your specific animation and my animation was my rotation and right here this is a value graph I believe so what you need to do is you can go to your speed graph because usually by default you're in your value graph and now you have this curve that I did now to work with your your speed graph all you gotta do is get these little anchors and then just drag them 
So if I grab this little anchor and I drag it, I have it put I have practically most of the animation being pushed to the left side and it just slowly starts decaying down. So I want this to be really, really fast. I want most of the animation to happen in the beginning and then just slowly go down. And you can either move that towards the end, towards the middle, however you want. And you, need, you can push them more towards each other. So just have it like start super slow in the beginning, then just go really, really fast in the middle and then super slow at the end. It just gives it more of this fluid feel rather than just having it linear. And another thing I actually did is I actually played with the positioning because one thing that I noticed is that when I did this, let me actually pick this one instead. When I did this is if I didn't do anything with the position and I completed my animation because one square is bigger than the other, it doesn't end up exactly where I want it to end up. So I have this bigger square that's all the way over here and this little smaller square that's over here because the scale is different. So I needed to position it a little bit. So I go from this X position and Y position all the way, just a tiny bit, just move it from right here to over here, just a little bit. And then it, so that way the, the animation just looks more fluid. And because it's rotating and it's being animated, you don't really see you don't really see that motion from the bigger square. And then it just completes. And that's pretty much it for this. It's practically just two different squares, have the trim paths animated at the same time, and then have this complete square. And it's literally just two squares on top of each other. So if I make this one disappear, you can still see a square because there's another one. Now the second thing I want to go over is the lines. The lines are pretty simple, nothing extravagant really. I just have a, a top and a bottom, they're the same thing, so I'll just focus on one. I'll focus on the bottom. And what I did is I made a... a shape and then I created a trim path and I started at 50-50. So I wanted, I want the start, so my left side, to be all the way at 50, and then my end at all the way at 50. So if I just click this away, and I show you, if this was at zero, then my start is here. I'm at my start right now. And if this is at 100, I'm all the way over here at my end. So this is my start, this is my end, and I want the end all to go down to the middle, right? So I just go to 50. And I want my start to come down here. So I go to 50. And then I just got to animate it. Turn this back to 0 and the end back to 100. And I go from 50 and then you see this animation. And that's it. And another thing I actually did was... I wanted, I wanted this to just start a little bit quick and then just kind of decay in. Kind of like how you had the ra the rounded rectangle. Have it really, really fast a little bit in the beginning and then just slowly ease out. So I added easy ease keyframes. And then I went to my speed graph. And I kind of just pushed it a little bit to the left. Just to... It wasn't a lot, just a little bit. Just, just to have it speed up and then slowly just ease out. That was pretty much it for the lines. It was nothing extravagant, just t something tiny. And now to make the reverse happen, what I did is I pre-composed this. So I I dragged it and then I just pre-composed. And I made this pre-composed layer. And then I duplicated this layer. So control D. And that way I don't have to redo the whole keyframe animation or anything like that. I wanted everything to be the same. I didn't want to do it all over again. So what I did is I literally just right clicked and then time reverse layer. So what it does is it does the same animation just backwards. So now I have this animation where I have it appear 
and then this other copied, which is the same thing, I just made it go backwards. And then it just disappears. Have it stay for a bit, so that way you can see the text. And then just go away. And that's it. And now for the text, the text is pretty simple as well. I added a shape layer and then I had an alpha, I had an alpha mat. So practically as long as the text is inside this box, you will see it. If it's not inside this box, you can't see it. So if I take this off, no track mat, it's in that box. And then right here, it's not in the box. So this is when you can't see it at all. And the minute it just pops in, you'll be able to see it. And I did uh, animate the position. That's how you get the, the text coming in and then coming out. And I did play uh, with the speed for the, the text coming in and then coming out. I wanted the text to go in really, really fast and then just ease out again. And then for the end, I didn't really do much. I kind of just let it come out. Let me go back to our title. And one thing I did was for the whole square, I wanted it to split and then open up so you can see the text inside. So I pre-composed the whole, the, everything, my whole animated thing here and I named it center. So I have my whole intro come in and then I mask this out so I have this side my left side and then my right side and I have I literally just animated the position for it so I have this come in th come in from this X position all the way to this X position and then ultimately in the end I wanted to just go back to the center and because it looked a little bit unrealistic when it was cutting and moving I added a fast box blur just to blur it a little bit while it was in motion and then have the blur just come out once it's already the animation is done and then again when it was moving it blurs a little bit just to give it motion and then it goes away once it it's not moving anymore so it's literally just animating the position of this and then adding a little bit of blur And finally, what I want to do is I want to show you guys actually how to change the logo. Now, most of you guys want to use your own logo. It's very, very easy. All you got to do is right click, replace footage, and you go to file. And you find the logo, your logo, the one that you want. You click on it, and it wherever it is, desktop, pictures, anywhere. You click on your logo, then you click on import, and it'll change it. And it'll keep all of its properties. So all the little animations that you have, it'll have it. The little tiny animation it has. And that's pretty much it. You have your own little intro going on. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.